Number one is the phrase, let me think about it. Now we've got 10 of these and we're going to tie them all together in just a moment. But I like to think of this, as I say often, as watching Bob Ross paint a picture, paint a portrait, not a portrait, but a, uh, a scene. He likes to paint mountains. And when you first watch him, you don't know where he's going with this, but by the time he's done, you see this picture. You see this wonderful thing he's constructed. Now, I'm not the artist that Bob Ross is, but it's the same concept. We're putting these ideas like strokes on a canvas, putting them together, and you'll see it all tied together at the very end or near the end. And number one is the key phrase, let me think about it. And why would you say that to a narcissist? Because a narcissist loves to manipulate you and others, and he or she has already figured out that you're a soft spot. You're an easy, easy, easy target. You're the low-hanging fruit. You are the, uh, you are the wounded gazelle. You are the one with empathy. You are the one who is gullible, and so they are now controlling you. One of the ways they control you is making demands. Strong suggestions, or just assumed, as they call it, the assumed sale. That is to say, you know, salesmen use that term. When you are trying to sell something, you just assume they're going to buy it. It's a sales technique, and the narcissist does the same thing. They just assume, or pretend to assume, that you're going to agree with them. And in so doing, they get the sale. Well, what happens, though, if you say, now, nah, let me think about that. So the narcissist says, we're going to go to this place, we're going to do this thing, or we're going to watch this show, or whatever. We're going to buy this, you know, whatever he's saying. And you say, now, nah, let me think about that. Suddenly, the narcissist is immediately, suddenly, immediately, no longer in control. You've taken the reins out of his hands. You're signaling to the narcissist that uh, you are not a horse and he is not a cowboy riding you. Let me think about it. Now imagine you're a cowboy and you're riding a horse and you say, giddy up. And the horse turns his head back towards you best he can and he says, eh, let me think about it. <laughs> uh, that's not a horse you're going to ride. And so you think of the narcissist as a cowboy who is thinking you are his horse. And when he says, giddy up, you say, I don't think so. Nah, not this time. I'm going to give this some thought before I giddy up. So the narcissist goes and finds himself another horse. Number two is um, control the conversation by sticking to the topic or the subject because narcissists like to change the subject just to be in control. I don't know if you've ever been around a dinner table with other people and one of those people is a narcissist and you bring something up and the narcissist pretends that what you were saying is maybe offensive or the wrong thing and so they will obviously change the subject so that the others will see that he or she is in control of the conversation, but uh, also they're trying to make you look bad, make themselves look good. Like you picked up on that, you know, or they picked up on that. Um, but what you do is say, no, I was talking about this. You know, and stick to the subject, stick to the topic. And they don't know what to do with that because they'll, they'll try to say, no, we're going to change the subject and you go right back to the subject. So number two is control the conversation. Because a narcissist has to control everything, including what you say, including the conversation of others. Now, number three is, uh, should be kind of obvious, we did an entire video on this, but uh, sometimes this little two-letter word, no, is sufficient. So it's not, let me think about it. It's just, uh, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to go there. No. I don't want to go see that movie. Nope, not going to do it. Don't want to watch that TV show. Don't want to have this for dinner. Just say no. No, I'm not talking about being obstinate or being a jerk for the sake of being a jerk. I think you know that. But we're talking about in the context of dealing with somebody who is narcissistic, 
who insist on controlling for the sake of being in control, for using you and abusing you so they can have the supply that feeds their ego, and your response is, nope, we're not going to do that. We're not going there. Not going to happen. Number four is this. Expose them in front of others. And a good way to do this, I have found in my life, you know, I'm in my 70s, I've learned a thing or two about narcissists. The reason I make these videos, just sharing with other people some of the tricks of the trade, so to speak, that I've learned along the way. And one way to expose a narcissist before others is to uh, take an accusation, which is the truth, and form it as a question. So a narcissist may be a little heavy-handed, so you could not accuse him or her of being heavy-handed, but you could ask him, aren't you being a little heavy-handed there? Or maybe, why are you being a little heavy-handed? Or maybe they're being controlling, which I guess is synonymous with being heavy-handed, but you could say the same thing. Why are you being so controlling? Or are you trying to control the conversation? And what happens is everyone looks at the narcissist and they want an answer. That is the key to asking questions, to reframing accusations, if they're honest accusations. Ask questions because everybody is looking for an answer. They're looking to the narcissist because you just ask the narcissist, isn't that kind of childish? You know, that's another way of saying, of accusing them of being childish. And everyone looks at the nurses, you say, yeah, aren't you being kind of childish? They want to hear an answer. And when the narcissist answers, he is reinforcing the accusation. Well, what if he doesn't answer? Then he is accepting blame. I mean, either way you win. So take those accusations, but only if they're true accusations. Not false accusations. That's what narcissists do and frame them as questions. That is so powerful. I should make a video just on that. Every time I make a video, I always think of other videos to make. Number five, one way to uh, really put a narcissist in his place is just to ignore their verbal attacks. They typically don't have enough sense to put things in, in the form of questions. So you can just ignore them. When they make verbal attacks on you, the best response, and I did a whole video on this one, the best response I have found, no matter what it is, is tell the narcissist to grow up. You know, your accusation is childish. Your attack is like the behavior of a toddler. So tell them to grow up. Why? Because they're behaving like toddlers. Because they're behaving like little children who are out of control. Every little three-year-old on the planet that I've ever seen is by nature, well, they're childish. They're selfish. They're self-centered. And a narcissist is a toddler who's never grown up. I mean, physically, yeah, they've grown up. Intellectually, they've grown up. But emotionally... Nah, they're still selfish little toddlers. So just tell them, grow up and ignore their attack. Number six is don't own their emotions. Because the one of the ways a narcissist tries to control you and other people is by setting what we would call the tone. The tone in the room. The feel of the room. Uh, you've seen people, I mentioned this in another video, you've seen people at the workplace, you know people at the workplace, and they have to keep that thing, that environment, in an uproar all the time. They have to have employees, you know, co-workers fighting each other, not just in uh, at the workplace, but I've seen this more in churches than anywhere. There's always somebody who wants to control the environment by causing discord disagreement. So what we do is we just uh, conform to that environment. We become emotionally what the narcissist 
wants us to be. No, I'm not going to do it. So the narcissist wants to make me angry, so, and others. No, I'm not going to be angry, sorry, or he makes to, may make us feel guilty. No, I'm not going to feel guilty. Sorry, narcissist, but uh, I'm not guilty, and so you're not going to make me feel guilty. Rather, I am going to be the adult in the room. I'm going to be the person who is centered. This is what you're thinking as you're dealing with a narcissist. And guess what? You're going to have to conform to me. And what you are doing is you are displacing the narcissist. And sometimes you may have to say it out loud. Something to the effect, it's kind of like, why don't you grow up thing. But you may have to say, why are you always causing discord? Why are you always causing people to fight each other? Why are you coming in here with all this doom and gloom? Why are you trying to make me or others feel guilty? I'm not guilty. Throw it right back at them. See how they respond. I will tell you how they respond. They're not going to like it because they want to be in control and you just took the controls away from them. You grab the steering wheel out of their hands and kick them out the door, kick them out of the driver's seat. So don't own their emotions and don't let them own your emotions. That's number six. Number seven, don't give them a pass. Uh, I can't think of any any circumstance where you would want to give a narcissist a pass for telling lies. I'll let this one pass. Or when they cheat, and you know it, I'll give them a pass. Why would you do that? When they steal something, particularly from you, well, it wasn't that much, or it's really not worth it, I'm going to let this one pass. I recall listening to a psychiatrist one time, and she was explaining when she was going through something akin to um, residency, earning her doctorate, I suppose, and there was one person at the facility, I guess it was a hospital where she was working, who was a narcissist and uh, quite the jerk. And it bothered her that everyone else let it pass. She just wasn't this obnoxious person. This narcissist just wasn't worth bothering with. And by not dealing with that, by letting it pass, the other employees were enabling this obnoxious narcissist. Don't let it pass. Because when you let it pass, you are enabling the other person to hurt you in the future and to hurt others. Don't give them a pass. After a while, they're going to get the message. They're not going to like the message they hear, but the message they hear is you are not going to give them a pass. You are on to them. You're not going to, you're not going to let them control you. Number seven, or number eight rather, is speak to their deception or speak to their deceit. That is to say, call them out on it. It's kind of like what we talked before, expose them, you know. But when it's obvious they're being deceptive, or when it's obvious they're being manipulative, or when it's obvious they're causing harm to others, speak to it, call it out, name it. Again, in front of other people. Another way to phrase this, I guess, is to shame them. But be sure you're correct. You know, you don't want to shame somebody for something they're not doing. One of the things narcissists love to do, and you know this, is to make other people feel guilty. It's gaslighting. Throw it right back at them. But unlike the narcissist, you're not inventing something. You're not gaslighting. This is real. They are being deceitful. They are narcissists. Speak to it. You may want to ask them. Remember we said before, phrase it or frame it in questions. You may want to ask them, why are you such a narcissist? Or why are you uh, acting like a narcissist? Or however you want to phrase it. Speak to their deception, whatever it happens to be. Number nine, I don't know any better way to say this than uh, use the phrase, don't sweat it. Now, some people say don't let them see you sweat. 
I think it's better just not to sweat. Don't let them get to you. Don't let them get under your skin. Don't let them have a parking place, as some people like to say, in your brain. Your mind is yours. It's occupied. Hang a no occupancy sign on your mind. And you might want to hang another sign that says, No Narcissist Allowed. And you're thinking this. And when the narcissist comes along, you're not going to let them see you sweat because you're not sweating. You're cool. You're under control. You're centered. You know what's going on. You know this is a manipulative person. You know this is a narcissist. You are aware. You got it down. You're not sweating. Number 10 is use their names. Now, we talked about calling people out. Use their name. Uh, you know, some people use, uh, they will take the person's name and they will, uh, you know, if the guy's name is Robert, they'll call him Bobby, trying to be humiliating. Uh, I think that's a little bit overboard, a little bit disrespectful. You become like the narcissist, and in some sense, you need to be kind of like the narcissist, but not to that, not to that extent. But just use their name, maybe their first name and their last name. Usually, I just use the first name. But uh, that gives them a sense of being called out. Remember when uh, you were in school and the teacher called your name? Maybe you were misbehaving and you know, oh, I'm in trouble. Or maybe she just wanted you to answer a question. You were in the spotlight, right? And everybody was listening. Everybody got real quiet. They wanted to hear what you had to say. So use their names. Their name is Bob, call him Bob. If they go by Robert, call him Robert. Robert, got a question for you. Why are you trying to control people? What are they going to say to that? They'll think of something. They're narcissists. They're, they think uh, quickly. Not always smartly, but they think quickly. They always have a comeback. Maybe a stupid comeback, but they have to have some comeback. The number 10 is use their name. Now, what are we talking about here? Let's tie all these 10 things together. And let's put it in this context. And I don't like to think of any human being as trash because we all have value. But I'm just using this as an analogy. What do you do with trash? Do you keep it? Well, if you're a hoarder, maybe you do, but that's not a wise thing to do. But in our household, every Friday morning before the sun comes up, there's this big truck that comes down the street and picks up the trash. So what we do is we have a trash can, we have many trash cans, and we dump them into the big trash can. Thursday night, we wheel out the big trash can to the curb. In other words, we take out the trash. So where does the trash go? It goes in the trash bin. I mean, how hard is that? So what we're talking about is we need to think of narcissism, not the narcissist himself, but narcissism as trash. You need to treat it like trash. You don't accept it. You don't keep it. You don't tolerate it. You don't tolerate those verbal attacks. You say no to garbage. I'm not going to have trash sitting around my house. I mean, you don't, do you? Maybe you do. I don't know too many people who would put up with that. So uh, why would you put up with narcissism? It's emotional trash. Take it out. Don't keep it. Don't let those people do that to you. Take out the trash. And again, we're not calling people trash. We're talking about narcissism, not narcissists. But uh, where does it go? Goes in the trash can. Do not tolerate it. Do not keep it. Whatever you do, do not hoard it. And if you're stuck in rumination... Yeah, I'm afraid you might be hoarding some trash. You might want to take that out. If you found this video useful, we invite you to join our family by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it uh, worthy of a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it on social media. And I'm sure you have some thoughts that come to your mind as we were talking. 
So if you would, leave those thoughts in the comments section so others can uh, learn from you. And we'll see you all next time.